after missing deadlines, after deadlines, after deadlines. Finally, we got some progress on the current 5G situation in Malaysia. Does it mean we can all enjoy 5G for more telcos soon? Well, hmm, continue watching to find out more. Wait, before we continue with the video, I have an important announcement to make. Search Ninja is hiring! We are looking for driven, like-minded individuals to join our growing team. But wait, you might be wondering, why would I want to work here? Well, let me show you. You get to work here with some of the most incredible creatives. You get access to incredible studios like this and all of this cool equipment. I'm trying to work here, can you get out of here? What the? You also get free parking. So, are you interested? Hit the link below to see what positions we have available. To recap, previously the telcos have been hesitant to sign up with Digital National Berhad, which is Malaysia's single wholesale network. There were several concerns by the telcos, especially the wholesale pricing, which was priced at 30,000 ringgit per gigabits per second per month that's locked to a 10-year period. The government has been giving several deadlines telling telcos to sign up with DMB or risk losing out on getting 5G access. In an attempt to solve the 5G stalemate, the government had offered to reduce its stake in DMB by offering 70% to the telcos. Initially, the big four telcos, including Cellcom, DG, Maxis, and U-Mobile, were reported to demand a larger stake, and they want to be influential shareholders. But this was rejected by Finance Minister Tengku Zafru, and have demanded the telcos to finalize their stakes by 30th June this year. Tanku Zafro even said in an interview that foreign telcos are queuing up to get access to the Malaysian market. He even said these foreign telcos remain interested in contributing to the development of Malaysia's 5G network. And the government will not reject the possibility of offering shares to foreign telcos if the local telcos are not interested in investing in DMB. On Madeka Day, 31st August, it appears that the government was planning to announce that all six telcos are finally on board with DMB by taking an equity stake. However, two telcos, namely Maxis and U-Mobile, have pulled out from the deal. And it was reported that they don't see the benefit of being a minority shareholder. DMB issued a statement that four remaining telcos such as Cellcom, DG, Telecom Malaysia and YTL Communications remain interested in investing. And because the two telcos have decided not to continue at the last minute, DMB will need to revise the transactional share subscription and shareholders agreement to cater to just four telcos instead of six. Despite not investing in DMB, it has been clarified that both Maxis and U-Mobile can still offer 5G services if they sign the access agreement. So to make it clear, there are two separate agreements. One is for the telcos to take a share in DMB and the other is to get 5G access so that they can offer 5G to consumers. After the budget 2023 was tabled, DMB has announced that four telcos have finally signed their share subscription agreements. And they claim that Cellcom, DG, and TM will soon join YTL in rolling out 5G services to consumers starting in October. Both Cellcom and DG will hold a 12.5% stake each, while YTL and TM will get a 20% stake each. Meanwhile, the government via the Ministry of Finance will hold the remaining 35% stake and a golden share. According to DMB, the golden share grants the government various rights and privileges which cover ownership, sale, and transfer of shares on the part of the government. In case you're wondering, Cellcom and DG holds a smaller 12.5% stake because they are about to merge. And according to the agreement, any merged entity should not hold more than 25% stake in the single wholesale network. Both Cellcom and DG will be investing about 178 million ringgit each, while TM and YTL will be putting in about 285 million. Shortly after the announcement, Finance Minister Tengku Zafro claimed that all six telcos have already signed the access agreement. And this means that more Malaysians can start using 5G services. But wait, wait a minute. Did all telcos really sign the access agreements? So here are the facts. DMB and the three public listed telcos have only announced the signing of a conditional share subscription agreement with DMB. And there's no mention they've signed the access agreement. In fact, if we refer to the individual announcements in Bursa, Malaysia, it is mentioned that the share agreement is conditional and subject to several items, including the execution of the access agreements. If the telcos have signed the access agreements, they will have to firstly get approval from the shareholders and number two, make an actual announcement. If you look back at Tengku Zafu's Facebook posting on Sunday, he had a screenshot of a report from The Edge titled, All Six Telcos Execute Access Agreements with DMB to List 5G Services. 
This is actually the initial article published on Saturday morning. The Ash has already updated its report on Saturday evening, which no longer says that the access agreements have been executed. Instead, it now says that telcos have reached an agreement on the terms and the execution of the access agreement is subject to the final board approvals. So I'm not sure why the finance minister said that the AA has been signed when nobody, including DMB, has officially announced it yet. If the access agreements have been really signed, Cellcom, DG, Max and U-Mobile and TM will definitely make a huge announcement and they will inform customers that they can truly access 5G very soon. The biggest question right now is the actual cost of 5G. The wholesale pricing that's locked to a 10-year period is one of the biggest concerns. Hopefully, the government and DMB will revise the pricing to a fair level and is regulated by the MCMC's mandatory standard of access pricing. Data consumption is increasing on an annual basis and it doesn't make sense for the telcos to sign on a wholesale pricing that's locked to 10 years. At the moment, Whitetail Communications DS5G remains the first and only telco to offer commercial 5G services in Malaysia. Cellcom has started its friendly user trials, but it is only for selected customers. What do you think of the current 5G situation? Let us know in the comments down below. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, like us on Facebook, and don't forget to subscribe us on our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell icon so that you'll be informed of our future videos. This is Alex from SoyaChincha.com. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!